And the first Super Bowl halftime show you directed was, was Michael Jackson in 1993. And um, that happened because in 1992, mm -hmm. the halftime shows were not much at Super Bowls. Uh, in 1992, CBS had the Super Bowl and they did dancing snowflakes on the field. <laughs> and what happened was that they got challenged in 1992 mm -hmm. by In Living Color, a black comedy sketch show. Yes, sir. And they said, during the halftime show, switch over from CBS to In Living Color and watch us on the halftime show. Yes. And then come back and you can... Uh, Tune, you know, tune back into the game. And at halftime, when the dancing snowflakes came out there, CBS lost 20 million people in like 30 seconds on well, their radio. Well, and Living Color is a terrific program. And it was. A, it was. Yeah, I know, right. So so then somebody reached out to you to... to... Well, what happened to finish that story sure. is CBS said, and the networks all said, the NFL said, we can't like put fluff in the half in a in a, in a Super Bowl halftime show. Mm -hmm. We need something that's going to grab people and keep their attention. And that's when Radio City helped them book Michael Jackson, and they were going to go ahead and produce the show. I had a history with Michael Jackson, and he said, "I want Don and his company to do this." I don't want Radio City Music Hall because I trust Don. I've been working with Don. We'd worked on a lot of stuff. Like what? Commercial work? Mo or whatever. No, no. Motown 25, where he first did the moonwalk. Okay. Um, did you know he was going to do the moonwalk that night? Um, no. I, I got to tell you how that happened. Um, sure. When we did Motown 25, everybody wanted to do a Motown song and then their new song. Yes. Marvin Gaye wanted to do a Motown song and then do sexual healing, okay? We said, no, you can do one song, and it's got to be a Motown song. That's it. And we held firm. Mm -hmm. We knew we needed Michael Jackson, okay, mm -hmm. and the Jackson 5. So he said, I'll come back and do um, uh, a, a number of medley with the Jackson 5 songs, mm -hmm. uh, tunes, but you must let me do a single, a new single I've got coming out. And initially we said no. And then we said, I was working with Suzanne DePass, who was president of Motown uh, Productions. Mm -hmm. Let's just wait and take a look at what Michael does with Billie Jean. So the night before Motown 25, at midnight, the theater we emptied, Smokey Robinson and Linda Ronstead were in there, and Suzanne and I were in there, and Michael came out with the fedora, the glove, all of which you can now see in the Smithsonian Institution. Yeah. And did Billy Jean. And we looked at each other and said, we better put this on the air. <laughs> okay. I bet. Wow. And, uh, and I said, who's going to take the call on Monday morning when Marvin Gaye says, What's up? you didn't let me do my new song. Right. I said, I don't care. I'll take the call from Marvin Gaye. <laughs> Did you get a call from Marvin Gaye? No, we didn't. Okay. Nobody but would, nobody would look at that, what Michael Jackson did that time, that at that moment and call and complain about it. So you, you, you did know he was going to moonwalk, though, or because you saw we it the night before? We did not know that he was going to moonwalk. But we he did all the moves, you know, and, and the costume and all that. And the moonwalk just happened. And you as a director was like, follow? Like, what, I, just, like, what? I just followed him. I, I, he, the most interesting shot on Michael was a full figure shot. Sure. What we call a head to toe. Mm-hmm. And so I had had that all the time on him in case I needed it. And when he started the moonwalk, there was no question about it. I was also at that time working with Mikhail Baryshnikov, the best ballet dancer of our century, yes, defected from Russia. He said, that is the most amazing piece of dance and choreography I have ever seen. You know? And it, it lives on in history. You know? Don, Don Misher is here. So many great stories. Uh, Ten seconds to air the new book uh, by Don about uh, uh, all of these stories. And so Michael doing the that, that halftime show, what was that 
like for you and the truck and the chair it or whatever? Was, uh, first of all, we had to figure out a way to get a stage out there that would not damage the field. So we designed a stage that came out in about 22 pieces. It weighed tons. It was on soft balloon tires. It could be rolled out, mm -hmm. connected together. It had a little dressing room for Michael. It had his band. It had wind machines, pyro machines, <laughs> all this stuff mounted in it. And part of the fun was seeing, can we get this damn thing together? And the three and a half minutes we had to put it together and we just made it. And, um, but Michael, you know, Michael, it was magical. I mean, Michael was a guy who, if he came into this room, he would just sit in the corner and be very nice and polite and mm -hmm. all that. And, but when he gets on a stage, he takes control. I will always remember the first meeting with the NFL and with NBC, mm -hmm. I brought Michael in, and Michael said, went around the room and introduced himself quietly. We sat at the table, and the first thing Michael said was, now the first thing I want to do is move the start of the game four hours later <laughs> so that my halftime show will be in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and how did that That's go? That's in L.A. Yeah? I yeah, just said there was silence in the room, and I said, Michael, you know, that means that people are going to be seeing you at midnight in, in New York. It, it won't work, man. It, so that's your work. way of, of, of convincing Michael Jackson, yeah, the Super Bowl, but the Super Bowl half, uh, halftime is not going to move the kickoff. Wow. That is <laughs> well, funny, Don. Well, that's one Don. of the things dealing with the artists on the halftime shows. Yeah, sure. Wow. Yeah. You, the first thing you say to them is, this is not your show. You're not 100% in control of it. Mm -hmm. It's not like going out on tour and playing a big venue like the Hollywood Bowl. Mm -hmm. You are one cog and a whole wheel that is called Super Bowl Sunday. You're one little piece of it, and you have to obey by you have to obey and, and follow certain rules and preconditions. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.